to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies at which any business reflecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this Act, the Federal and Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof distributed to the persons on the approved list posted in the Board of Education Administrative Office and sent to the burden record in the Star Ledger. The announcement posting for the work session along with the date, place, and time thereof was distributed on June 25th, 2019. The items to be discussed during closed session, closed work session if needed of the June 27th, 2019 work session may include personnel matters, student matters, legal matters, negotiations, and or grievances, and tactics and techniques utilized in protecting public safety and, the, and property. The results of these discussions will be made public as soon as possible. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So good evening, everyone. Um, we decided to have this meeting. We thought it was a really appropriate time to discuss our update on where we are with the one-to-one -one implementation. We've been talking about this for literally a year and a half now, and you know, there's been questions that have been thrown in the board, uh, superintendent update, board updates, a uh, little bit of information here and there, board meetings. Uh, but we've made a lot of great progress, and I just want to update you on exactly where we are, as well as have Mr. Gorski and I have Greg Carline from Microsoft here as well. Uh, Greg, um, you, everybody here knows that this is a conversation that we've been having in central office and something I've been speaking about, but also at some point we really brought Mr. Gorski into the picture to say this is something we're rolling out at the high school and we need his investing in the one-to-one -one rollout as well and how he can see instruction fit for the district. Um, once we went through the whole process, we've had many different vendors in who we wanted to work with and build relationships with, but uh, time and time again, uh, Microsoft and Greg was the person that we felt was best suited for Fairmont High School at this time. Um, but we're going we're gonna to talk about the process. I'm going to talk about the timeline and how we got here, and then I'm going to turn it over to these two gentlemen so they can talk about what took place probably over the last six months or so and where we are now and where we're going moving forward. So we just thought, you know, this would be nice to have a good half-hour conversation about this and then before we jump into our regular monthly board meeting. So this conversation started probably about a year and a half ago, and I have a timeline here in front of me that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to read to you, of how it started and where it evolved to. Uh, January 2018, I went to the technology conference that I go to every year at Texpo, and I had preliminary conversations when I was there with Microsoft, Google, Dell, CDW, all the companies down there about what a one-to-one -one would look like. And it was really the first of the conversations that I had outside of district when I was there. Um, from there, uh, we came back, we had a lot of conversations. In April to March 2018, we, uh, the board supported the budget to upgrade our technology infrastructure. We knew this was going to be an investment that we were going to have to make. And instead of just dumping all our money into hardware, hardware I mean computers, we said it was time for us to upgrade our infrastructure as a district. Let's do that. And while we're getting ready for a one more rollout. Uh, June 2018, we decided to do a technology audit of our district. 
to see have an outside company come in and give us an honest needs assessment of where we are and where we need to go. Uh, in September 2018, we received that uh, report. Uh, we took a look at it and we hit the ground running. Uh, October 2018, I attended a New Jersey School Board's conference. I was down in Atlantic City, and again, I had meetings and conversations with Microsoft, Dell, Google, CDW, all the big companies that were down there to talk about what it would be. Invited them into district now at this point. Um, we had them come in December 2018, so uh, this past December that just passed up, uh, to come in and meet with our um, administrators, our teachers, um, anybody, su subject supervisors, and talk about what does it look like? We want to roll out January 2020. It's, it's a year away. How do we get from here to there? Looked at PD, looked at our curriculum needs, looked at what type of devices, all different types of devices. So we had um, several different meetings. We had one meeting with Microsoft and 20 people in this room. We had one meeting with Google, Dell, CDW, CDI, and we sat there and we did a round robin. We went through all of them, asked them questions, went through the timeline. From that, uh, I went back, now a year past, January 2019, went back to the Texpo conference. Mr. Gorski came down there with me, as well as our technology uh, administrators. Um, and we went down there and we continued those conversations down there. Uh, after that, uh, April to March of 2019, the Board of Ed supported the budget to roll out one-to-one -one devices for the ninth and 10th grade. Uh, March, this just March, a couple months ago, uh, Microsoft uh, gave us devices to pilot with our administrators and teachers. They gave us about 30 devices to pilot with them, as well as um, Chromebooks. Uh, Google uh, and Dell gave us Chromebooks to pilot. So we were piloting Chromebooks and uh, the two-in-one Dell device with the Microsoft platform at the same time. We narrowed it down to those two platforms at this point. From narrowing it down to those two platforms, we then took it a step further and then we put them in the hands of teachers and students so we could get authentic assessment of what it would be like in the classroom. We did that up until the end of the school year, uh, all while they were working with us hand in hand. Microsoft was there the whole way with us, all the way up until June. Uh, in June, um, we, had, uh, we surveyed everybody that worked uh, with these laptops, with these uh, devices. Um, we surveyed administrators, teachers, students, and had a meeting. Mr. Gorsk had a meeting, and he'll speak of that, of what it was like and what they felt they would like to see in their hands moving forward to meet the needs of our students and curriculum needs. Um, this July, now moving forward, July 2019, when we have a board meeting, it looks like we're going to have a board meeting, so sorry about that, but um, we will be appointing an instructional technology coach. That was also in this year's budget. The job description was done, and we have all the applications in now, and Mr. Gorsk and I are going to interview for that position. Um, August to September, uh, the high school staff will be provided whatever device we decide to pick, um, which looks like it's going to be the Microsoft platform with the Dell Tool 1 device. Uh, August uh, to January 2020, we'll be providing professional development for our staff on how to teach with that device. And January 2020, it'll be rolled out to the 9th and 10th graders at the high school. Sounds exciting. Sounds exciting. A lot of work and it was you know one thing that we stressed that's a two-year process January 2018 to January 2020 but we always said we wanted to try to do it the right way we did not want to rush it we wanted to take our time and make sure we make the right decision you know a lot of people just jumped right in we did not go there what I would like to do I want to have mr. Gorski and Greg speak and talk about the process so that we could jump into questions because we only have another 20 minutes before our meeting starts. You met August 2019 for the PD, right? August 2019. Yeah, I think you said one. Yeah, sorry. No problem. Yeah, so I mean, I just, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to start off by saying the the committee that we put together for this and the teachers was truly outstanding. It was, it was. Uh, it was a representative teacher from each of our academic departments at the high school, um, and they came to you know many meetings and did, and did a lot of research on their own. They were they were a tremendously professional group, uh, and one that uh, really was engaged with this process from from the very beginning. Um, you know, they they were excited uh, that that enthusiasm I think really rubbed off on the students as well as they tried both of the devices. 
um, you know, as you know, as as they use them with uh, with with students, both the the uh, Microsoft device and also the Chromebook. Um, the feedback that I that I got consistently and was really affirmed when we had our final meeting in June was that the capabilities of the Microsoft platform just gave us so many more opportunities uh, than, than than the Chromebook. Um, and there's, there's a lot of exciting things that Microsoft is doing in the field of education right now uh, in, in STEM-related disciplines. Uh, with a lot of their software, and Greg, I'm sure, will you know, speak to some of that when, it, when I get to him. Um, but uh, the, I will say the upside of, 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 the, of the Microsoft platform was something that time and time and time again, the teachers really were enthusiastic about and really great about. The kids loved the devices. They, they, they fell in love with the stylus. Um, I, there, there were teachers at that meeting that said there were the, 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 the most notes they took uh, were, <laughs> was, was when they had that device in their hand over the course of the entire school year. They were, very, they, they were, really, um, they were really jazzed up about, about using that particular device. Um, you know, when, when, it, when I turn it over to Greg, he'll be able to speak to, as he works with many different districts and, and, and sees a lot of what goes out there, he'll be able to speak to our process. Um, because, you know, it's difficult, obviously, you know, you try to put a process in place, you try to gather all the stakeholders, you try to do the research, you, you, you try to be really as thorough as you can when you're making as big a decision as this. Um, and it's, but it really takes kind of an outside perspective to, to, to show you um, and, and, and guide you along the way and also give you feedback about how you're doing it vis-a-vis -vis how others do it. Um, so, you know, I, we feel really comfortable uh, with, with, with making this recommendation. Um, the, you know, the, the, the students, the teachers have already been using uh, Google uh, Classroom, uh, you know, pretty widely in the high school and other schools across the district. And there's nothing saying that that, that, that can't continue. And I think that it will continue. Uh, that that will still be continued to, to be used in, in our classrooms. But the Microsoft Notebook OneNote capability and a lot of the other features that they have offer even another level. There's a lot of features that that are that are really excellent uh, for students with, with, with special needs uh, in terms of being able to um, really. Uh, take content and, and deliver it in such a way that's more accessible to them. Uh, so all, all of those factors are, are really very, very exciting. Um, it is certainly, uh, and, and I just want to say before I turn it over to Greg, um, the level of support that we got from Greg and his team was second to none. It, it, it's unlike anything I've ever seen uh, from, from a professional development perspective. Before the teachers used these devices with their students in class, they got a one-to-one -one training session with Greg and his uh, educational facilitator on his team to go through everything. Uh, and they had an open line of communication to be able to troubleshoot any, any issues that came up along the way. And there was just so much wraparound support. Um, and, you know, that is, that is really an uncommon level of support, and it's something that makes me feel very comfortable as well, because there's always going to be bumps uh, along the way when you, when, you, when you launch an initiative like this, uh, and 4A, you know, taking this leap forward uh, to, you know, to, to where we should be in our classrooms in terms of using technology with students. Uh, but um, I have consistently felt reassured that Greg has never, you know, let me or any of the teachers languish with any of the questions that we've had and has been just on the spot constantly giving us the support that we need. So, Greg, um, I'll let you uh, take it away here. Yeah, I stole my story. <laughs> oh, my 20 minutes of content right there. Not too much, not too much of it. So, when we started this journey together about six months ago, it, we, we really evaluated uh, Fairlawn District as a very unique and special opportunity. And just to give you a bit of back background of myself, I come with 20 years of IT, managed enterprise down the SMB, and now formally into uh, education. And typically the scenarios that we are dealt with when we have to show what Microsoft is doing in the educational space is that they already have a platform in place. So the biggest gripe that they have is like, oh, well, then we're going to have to rip and replace and I know one of the concerns that 
you know, Nick and, and also Paul had, it was like, listen, we have a couple, uh, a couple teachers that are really leveraging Google Classroom. And I said, at no time are we there to take it away. If they want to use Google Classroom, that's fine. We are going to come in and complement what the teachers have already invested their time into. So we've already heard about the multiple device pilots, the one-on-one -on -one type of uh, scenarios where we sat down with the teachers to really understand what was important to them. Because it seemed like it, it was kind of all over the spectrum, where we sat down with a math teacher, what's important to you, science teacher. They all had a common thread, but they all had their own individual needs on how they want to conduct the content for that day's class, whether they want to use the projector, whether they want to have mobility, whether they're not tethered to a desktop somewhere within the classroom setting. So we addressed all of these things, and I just want to, if we could go over, I put together a presentation and I'll leave a copy with you folks before I go. But here was the findings of the common threads that we had with all the teachers on the committee. The teachers were looking for better engagement with their students. The teachers were looking to be more effective and efficient in the classroom. It seems like time is of the essence. When a teacher comes in, the student sits down, and boom, they have to go straight into content. So that was really, really important. Students would like to embrace the technology in the classroom as they feel the content would be more engaging. So when we sat down with these individual teachers, we're like, well, how do we do that? So we leveraged this little, small wireless adapter using your existing technology, which actually was able to have the teacher broadcast whatever that content was. Could have been videos, could have been images, could have been a poem. Whatever was relevant to that particular teacher was able to be cast, cast onto the uh, technology that you currently have. So right there, you got a higher level engagement than you did before. Teachers would like better tools to assi assist specific audiences in the classroom. There were multiple teachers that either had special needs or ELL students. We actually showed them all of the built-in tools within the device that will help them solve that issue. And when we showed them the language tra translator, the magnifier, the line block technology for people who have a hard time concentrating, where you can actually isolate just a single line on a paragraph, that all comes with the operating system. They were actually blown. They were really, really blown out. And then obviously taking the administration component into it. They wanted a turnkey, self-sufficient type of system that was really going to meet the needs of what the overall initiative encompassed. Right? So that was just the findings having these, these, these conversations. Now here's the feedback that we got when we sat down with all the individual teachers that were part of this, this committee. We love the visual aids. Language translator is very, very important. Focus, focus assist for locking down Teams. And Teams is an application that is built into the device. It allows the teacher to lock all of the content on all of the students' devices that are relevant for that particular, the particular topic or whatever they were reviewing at that particular time. They have a great collaboration between Teams and Google Drive. This is getting back to our Google Classroom folks. They've invested a large amount of time putting all of their documents, alphabetical order, exactly the way they want it. They were under the impression that they'd have to move all that. Furthest thing from the truth, we actually showed them how Teams connected directly straight to their Google Drive. So everything that they've created thus far, all they have to do is pull it down to Teams, and it's right then and there. The wireless projecting, <clears throat> that was very, very important. The stylus pen and the palm licking technology, if you haven't had a, tr a chance to try it, definitely try it. Place your palm on the device, and once you start using the stylus pen, it only picks up the stylus pen's motion, just like a pen and paper. The quiz shuffling option seemed to be a, a big, big hit. So for teachers that are pushing out a quiz for that particular day, they actually have, a, it's a randomizer button, so if I'm sitting next to Sally and Johnny, we're taking the same quiz, but the questions are jumbled up. So they could be sitting right in my lap, and maybe he's taking the same questions, but in a different way. The note stylus, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uploading files to different repositories. And here was one big, this, this was a big aha moment for me, was classroom presentations. We asked each teacher, do you have your students present in class? And the answer was yes. How many students are so fearful from actually presenting in front of their peers? Sure, there was a significant amount of uh, a significant number. With this technology, the student has the ability to go record their presentation on their device and directly send it to the teacher for a review. They can do it in the back of the classroom, however they seem fit. 
but the technology is definitely there. And one last component that we really didn't touch upon was open office hours. I'm assuming teachers still have office hours, right? For, for training for students. And now it can all be done digitally. So whether they're in the library, they can have a conversation with the teacher either across the hall and they're comfort their own home. So you can obviously see some of the benefits and some of the technologies that we can currently leverage with this, with this initiative. Any questions so far? As far as our, and this was, this was a big thing that I wanted to own, was my commitment back to Paul, to Nick, and the entire district. Here are the commitments that me, my team, and Microsoft are going to give back to, to the district. We're going to create a technology professional development plan that helps fast track all departments, heads, and staff. Create, aid, and advise on existing security features and policies that ensure that all data is secure and in alignment with the New Jersey DOE compliance practices. Create a device roadmap deployment strategy that aligns with current rollouts and deliverables. Weekly syncs with administration and staff making sure that we're meeting the school's expectations. Weekly consultations with our IT to outline any system related concerns or questions. Bi-monthly review of performance and device adoption. And then what we're ultimately trying to do, maybe a little bit further down the road, is to create a support desk ticket system. Where if a teacher has a problem, they need to provision a certain type of software. From what we gathered through our findings, is that that seems to be a, a pretty bumpy road. We're actually going to create a, an access, a direct access, potentially to IT, so that the requests are all documented and they are actually responded to in a certain time. So these are the commitments that we're that we're prepared to get back to the district. That's it. Thank you. And Paul, any questions? How, how much per device? Uh, we're talking. We're working on that over the next couple of weeks. We have an idea, but that's not the Thank you. No problem. How long will this? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, one issue that many educators have with technology is the fact that um, there are many websites that uh, are, blo are blocked. How do you plan to uh, uh, correct it? in terms of making sure that websites that uh, should not be blocked, uh, students have actually access to it. So it's actually a two-pronged approach. One is to sit down with the department supervisor and to send out some sort of a poll to all of those coordinating teachers and say, what are the most avid websites that you're going to need access to? Once they give that information, that will be passed down to IT. Now, the approach that we are going to take from a security perspective and making sure that I would feel more comfortable with the device being locked down more and then the request to come in than the other way around. Does that make sense? Also, we've been communicating with our students in our student dialogue meetings and you know, Cindy's been there and Ron was at those <coughs> meetings and Mary as well, um, saying to students, tell us what websites you want to go to so that we want to give them the ownership because maybe there's a website that we don't know about that we can look into and say there is an educational value for that and then maybe we can open that up to you. But we're, you know, we're trying to bring the students into the decision making as well. And I know that our IT director, our technology director here, we had a conversation today about it. So he's looking, knowing that we're going towards the Microsoft platform now, changes what type of virus protection and things like that they're going to look at moving forward. That's true. Um, I was just wondering how many other districts are currently using your particular uh, computer that, that we're, we're engaging in? Here in New Jersey? handful. I can just throw off some names if you like. You don't have to name. I... We actually submitted references and I believe you guys had a chance that We actually did go to, uh, myself and Mr. Kahn um, did go to uh, Riverdale, uh, which is uh, just, just uh, about 15 years from here. Um, that has been a, a Microsoft district for over a decade now. Um, and uh, we had you know, a meeting with, uh, with some of the tech staff and some of their administration there. Um, I would certainly be looking to set up a site visit uh, in, in the fall for our teachers that, 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 that have been on this group uh, to, to go and, and speak with teachers there, uh, student to student as well. I'd like to get some student representatives as well uh, as, we, as we move forward with, with doing the rollout. 
uh, but they've they, they've been very successful with with, with their initiative. So, I, mean, I think the piece with with, with with Microsoft versus the versus the Google platform is really um, you know providing sort of that you know workplace and then other readiness uh, for for our high school students. Just you know, them being familiar with, with with the applications, with a device like this, it's just it's just going to give them so many more skills uh, when they when they leave high school. It's a step up. I just wanted to say, I'm glad that you uh, mentioned Riverdale. Um, I work for an accounting firm that audits Riverdale's school district, and I know how long they have had the rollout, and I know feedback from talking with the VA and, and the um, superintendent that it has been very successful yeah. there. And the nice thing about it, too, is that they have done it for a significant period of time, so they've they've hit the potholes already, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, in hoping in, in hoping to that, you know, that, that that I think they could help us. And I'm not saying I'm putting all, I'm all my eggs in the basket by any means, but... No, no, no. Means, but a district that's that close and then and is and is you know familiar to us and similar to us that they can sort of say okay well you know make sure you do this make sure you don't do that you know that that type of thing as we as we navigate. Thank you. Yeah, for how long will this assistance that you're providing to the teachers be continued? And is there a cost factor to that? So for as long as it takes, and that could be the length of four months, six months. I had a team to write reports of seven, and we were going to create a roadmap strategy that will align to what are we hearing, right? Because this is going to be new for the district. This is going to be new for us, right? We don't know what we don't know. But my commitment back to Paul and also Nick was like, listen, we're going to make this work. We're going to make this work. So if there are additional asks that come out, I will find the resources to do that. And getting back to Part two of your question as far as the cost, if there's zero cost involved. Um, so I'm super excited that you hear of all the progress, and um, I'd love to see the device myself. We don't have one in the room right now. There's not no example. Okay. Um, to eventually see the device. Um, this is probably more a comment for the administration than um, for you, but I, of course, with any new initiative, um, it meets a really serious need, and it shows progress. Um, but I just, as a board member, don't have a good sense of how administration is projecting out um, cost increases over time for maintenance and for rolling out the device to additional grade levels. And this is a category that I assume would grow. And so whatever that base number is of cost per unit, relative to some other device that maybe doesn't have all the functionality we would like, but is at a lower price point. I just, as a board member, would like to see the administration um, be able to assure us that it's within the ballpark of equivalent and that the extra we might be paying for Microsoft is um, giving us value that's going to be sustainable over time, projecting future needs. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Um, is this the, is, we already have an executed agreement with, with this company, is that correct? Microsoft, we have a working relationship with Microsoft already. Okay. But we haven't purchased anything yet. All right, so this is under consideration, so it's... This is the recommendation of the administration, but now we're just getting into the talks of how much each device is. So, I would just like to say that I'm happy that uh, you chose a Microsoft <coughs> device, because you can Google Classroom on any device, even Apple device, so, um, but you can't excel on Google, so I totally, uh, I like the Microsoft software much better than the Apple or Google software. Yes, I just said that publicly, but, um, <laughs> but also the, um, I just wanted to say that one of the issues for, um, for you know, interneting, um, so to speak, I don't want to say Googling, but one of the issues was, uh, like, the fourth grade studies the New Jersey counties, mm -hmm. and so they do Essex and Middlesex, and it has the word sex, so they couldn't download. Mm -hmm. So that's where it becomes more fuzzy um, for, for students at the, you know, at, in certain, when you're looking for certain things, and that's where that liaison relationship that you're talking about through the IT to get like an app on or something like that needs to be really polished because that's what's going to happen when the fourth grade needs to look up their counties 
they need to at least at that moment in time be able to Google that and, and open that information up. Um, I'm going to take some audience questions if there's any comments from the audience or questions. I just have one question regarding training. Judge Cut. Always. I just have a question regarding training for these devices for staff. Are you also going to train paraprofessionals since they are going to be used by our special ed? I'm very happy that there are accommodations yeah. for that. Are you planning to? If it's relevant, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead. Um, just one um, item that will possibly need to be discussed is the um, point that was brought up about um, open office hours and the time frame in which teachers may be expected to have these open office hours. When I said open office, I meant like teachers are here after school, sometimes they're in a classroom at 3.30, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not, okay. don't worry, we're not, this isn't college. Gotcha. Uh, Tuesday nights, 7 and 9. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Greg, put me on the spot, you put me on the spot, it's the last board meeting for the year. Uh, yeah, that's an, it's been a while since it's been yeah. schools. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm happy, too, that um, we went to Microsoft. I, I, Involved in a one to one device right now, our, our Chromebook, and um, there is a, there is some functionality problems with with just Google Docs and not not in Google Classroom, but in Google Docs, Google where I think in a high school certainly, in middle school you can get away with it, but in high school certainly um, you want you want. Microsoft Word, and you want off, you want Office, the whole Office platform to be able to be used because otherwise um, it loses a lot of functionality. So, so I'm, I'm I'm glad that we went this way. A little extra money sometimes gets a lot of extra extra results back. So. Um, thank you. And just the last thing I want to say is we will be communicating to the parents. I plan on sending a letter home this summer saying this is where we're at in the process and this is where we're th this is where we're going moving forward. So everybody knows. Real quick. Very quickly. Um, I, I do appreciate um, the building tools for special needs students and English language learners. That is something that um, I appreciate. Um, also, um, I would like to, to uh, I would like to see uh, if you have, if, if, if those devices will have any um, uh, any tools also for students to be exposed to artificial intelligence uh, and, and, and STEM, that's something very important to me, especially artificial intelligence. And just to welcome my fellow board members come, I hope, you know, uh, our district is um, uh, engaging in, in a, uh, in, we have a big, 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 big vision uh, when it comes to uh, renovating our technology and um, taking our district to the, to the next step. Uh, we, it, it is my hope as a board member that we're getting not a, not a good deal, a great deal, because uh, um, this is a mutual relationship and I hope you know uh, you give us the best deal possible. Of course. And just to address the, the artificial intelligence, the AI, machine learning, anything that kind of encompasses STEM, STEAM, anything that kind of falls within that, that arena. We have dedicated people within Microsoft because of this being such a big initiative on the Microsoft side. You just tell me what you're looking for, and we'll find it. The district will let you know. Yes, yeah, or the district. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to thank you for presenting this to us. Um, this is a terrific update, and uh, like I said, I'm happy it went. Um, you know, without having any input, I'm happy it went towards the Microsoft interface. Um, that being said, we are now. I need a. I need a motion to adjourn the work session and open the regular monthly so meeting. So moved, second. Second. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you very much.